Yo, what's up everyone? It's Bill here for Classic Rock and Metal Review. Time for another rock concert video update. It's been a few months. Give you all the latest news, info, commercial and bootleg concert DVDs. Stuff that's come out recently and stuff yet to come. No fewer than 44 new bootleg titles to tell you about. Also five notable commercial releases and a Pink Floyd video that's out there to be seen from the early 70s, it just got unearthed on us, at least in its full, full context, as far as I can tell. I got five new pickups to show you. They all happen to be bootlegs. And also talk about five other things that I've recently watched. I've shown you before. Finally got around to checking them out. I'll give you the lowdown on those. Stuff from Kiss, Journey, Van Halen, Sabbath, Iron Maiden, The Clash, going to be a great episode, man. Mammoth episode. And actually, I have to admit, I actually deleted this episode. This is the second time I'm recording it. So, you know, sorry this is coming a little late. Should have been a few days ago. But here I am. And you know what? There's still this damn angry osprey flying around in my house. Even though it's 7.30 in the morning. All right? It's still buzzing about. And man, it is. It's friendly, like I said. So... I was going to go for like a Bloody Mary, maybe something with, you know, juice in it, no vodka in the house, so. Angry Osprey it is, my favorite brewing company, Slack Tide Brewing, awesome. All right, let's get going. Also streamed a couple of rock docs, we'll talk quickly about them too. Like I said, settle in, pour yourself something, I don't care what it is, but you know, this is a kickback and let's chat it up kind of thing. So, the new, I also saw some good new movies. Man, I went on a good run. I don't know what it is about movies. I go months without seeing anything good. And believe me, it's not for lack of effort. I start movies all the time and get halfway through them and it's just garbage. But I just went on another nice run. I got at least three newer movies to tell you about that are really good. Especially if you're like me and you love those, you're a fan of like survival situation videos or movies. I got three of them that just happen to fit that category. They all just happen to come on uh, Netflix around the same time. So, if you're a fan of protagonists sort of fighting for their life, whether it be against elements or psychological thriller kind of thing, uh, Maroon, Stranded, and all that, got some good ones to tell you about. Actually, 10 movies all together. We'll just, I'm just going to throw the names at you. It's not a movie episode. You know what we do here. All right, so also along the way, We'll start out with the five commercial titles to tell you it's about. Along the way, I'll give you my picks of the month. I think there's four of them. So let's get started. Depeche Mode, Strange and Strange 2, Blu-ray or DVD. This came out actually in December 2023. You get 11 videos and some previously unseen footage outtakes for that guy. And Neil Diamond, the Thank You Australia concert. Didn't notice this one came out. It's from Sydney. Mark his return to the stage after four years. This is a 1976 concert. Some nice extras. This was a live TV broadcast at the time. And going the commercials trimmed at least one of the songs. So there's cool extras like Neil talking to the crowd during the commercials. One of the songs that got cut is now back complete again. And there's a local TV behind the scenes build up special. That's also part of the extras. That came out in January. The Rolling Stones Live at the Wiltern, Los Angeles 2002. This is actually two CDs and a Blu-ray. You also get the two CDs and a DVD as an option. The set list on the CD is fantastic. This is a tour they were doing everything. They rehearsed over 100 songs for this tour, so you got a lot of choice deep cuts. It happened to be the first time I saw the Stones on that tour too, which of course they never equaled because they never tried a set list like that again. But um, the DVD and the, and the Blu-ray only appear to have nine songs on them, which is kind of lame because, guys, remember, I just got this thing, what, in the fall? Just got around to watching this, maybe by winter or time or so. Bootleg of that show. And it actually has 16 songs on it. So I'm not sure why you would go through this, you know, deluxe kind of presentation and then trim the concert down by half. You know, there's actually a couple bonus tracks makes it 18 tracks. So we're only getting half 
the material from this new Stones CD Blu-ray release, but live with the world in LA. So, you know, here's an instance where I usually don't try to promote bootlegs if the band gives you something real, but in this case, they're only giving us half of the full show. So hold on to your boot on that guy, obviously. Fog Hat coming out April 5th. Slow Ride, live in concert. It's live in Texas from 1999, filmed right before the passing of awesome slide guitarist, Lonesome Dave Peverett. 78 minutes. This is Blu-ray only. No DVD on this one. Looks pretty cool. I think they had a new album out around that time that was pretty damn good too. And last but not least, with the commercial releases, Robin Trower has something coming out in May. In concert with Sari Shore. I believe we got a CD of this in the fall. Recorded in September of 2023, but it's only 45 minutes long. Blu-ray or DVD option with this one. And I think the live album came out in October. Same uh, setup with Sari Shore. So there's your five commercial recent and upcoming releases onto the four, or I'm sorry, onto the 44 cooler bootleg titles. One or two of these are older that I just was unaware of, but I wanted to throw them out at you anyway. And a half dozen are CD, DVD combos. We'll do them all in a row. A lot of DVDRs, a lot of these don't have labels affiliated with them. So unless stated otherwise, assume they're DVDRs and non-label. Let's start with the usual deluge of KISS titles. Every month, pretty much this way, and this one's no different. There are seven standalone DVDs by KISS, one CD-DVD combo that's worth mentioning for sure. And as usual, like I said, I'll give you my picks of the month along the way. First off with KISS, Alive Detroit. We have first night, second night, and third night. Now the second night we already got from the band on the original Kissology video collection, 74 to 77. That would be January 26th. And we also got the first night, January 25th from the band as a bonus disc. And you know what, I, I admit standalones are awesome. Cool covers and all that. But you know, I just printed this one offline years ago, like a decade ago. Fan made cover, I'm sure, but looks pretty awesome, you know. Houses my bonus disc. All right, so that all being said, 27th has not been out there yet as far as I know. I'm sure it's been in trade in circles, but as far as a bootleg release, here it comes, the third night. So that one will be a pick of the month, I have to admit. Title number four, Madrid 1983, the video. This is from October 14th of 83. It's two DVDRs on shades. No makeup, early lick it up tour era. Pabellion de Real, Spain is our venue. Disc one has the show with some interview clips. Disc two, four songs from the show and complete interviews. The makeup being off guys is kind of where I draw the line with Kiss. As far as needing it, really wanting to see it badly. Nothing to do with the makeup and everything to do with them pretending to be a glam band from LA. You know, just it goes back to this CD. I did a full review on this if you want to check it out. Nashville 1984 Soundboard. It's only like three months after this show we're talking about here, this 83 Madrid video, where I just can't stand listening to Paul talk like he's 20 years old and he's from San Bernardino, you know? Give me New York Kiss. Because only a few months earlier, these guys were sounding great. I think it's that Brazil video, the last show in costume and makeup with Vinnie Vincent. I think it's Rio and man, and they just sound awesome there. It must be hot as hell. And that makeup is running all down their faces. They sound great and heavy. I mean, Gene looks like, literally looks like a monster here with that blood just all over him. That you know, they wanted to get their balls back with Creatures of the Night. I mean, talk about getting your balls. They look horrendous and horrendously cool on that video. And then everything just changes to me. And just really this whole stage presentation, you know. Paul's rapping up there. It gets corny as hell by this this show. And like Gene just looks like Tim Curry's understudy. and <laughs> It's just going from cool to, to not for me. But if you're a fan of that Vinnie Vincent Look It Up era, I think the album's actually really pretty good. 
but just live they just don't do it for me anymore but if you like that era this looks this looks like a great video to have i prefer new york kiss all right let's just leave it at that more kiss detroit may 1990 upgrade palace at auburn hills from may 18th of 1990 the hot in the shade tour revenge dress rehearsal stabler arena bethlehem pa this is from september 28th of 92 it's only a single cam shot though all these are pro shot by the way all these videos there's one that's not and one that's partial i'll let you know when we get there otherwise pro shot largo 1992 upgrade on the shades label capital center landover maryland october 18th of 92 61 minutes on that guy and last but not least we got a cd dvd combo of kiss and this one's pretty pretty cool it's on zodiac detroit 1974 first night with bonus dvd the cd is a pre-fm reel from april 7th and the dvdr i guess it's considered a bonus single cam shot from april 13th the audio however is synced from the april 7th audio only 29 minutes on the video by the way and yes they played the michigan palace twice within six days the uh, april 7th gig was part of a charity show I think a radio station was running and Aerosmith was also part of that guy. So let's hit up the rest of the CD DVD combos while we're at it. Lynch Mob Live Sensation. We're at the Ritz in Detroit, February 23rd, 1991. That's a CDR. The bonus DVDR pro shot from the M3 Rock Festival, Merriweather Post Pavilion, May 12th of 2012. So about a decade apart on these gigs, but soundboard CDR and Pro Shot DVDR. Camel Reading Festival 1976, August 28th of 76 in the UK. Soundboard on that guy. Bonus DVDR is Hammersmith 1976, April 14th. That was a Spanish TV broadcast. David Bowie Rare, the expanded edition on Sound and Vision label, 1969 to 1980. The DVD on this 97 minutes, various TV and live footage. Pretty cool stuff there. Peter Gabriel, Sledge Blow, the name of this title, on Amity, Philly, July 21st, 1987. Two CDs and a DVD-R of the same show. Dire Straits, Sydney, 1986. Already mentioned this before. Sydney Entertainment Center from April 26th of 86. And it's two CDRs and a DVD-R, again, of the same show. Another pick of the month. Rolling Stones, Pavilion de Paris, 1976, two CDs and one DVD, Silver Presses, Mayflower Label, the DVD from the June 6th of 76 show. The CDs are from various gigs that week. And can't go wrong with Black and Blue Stones, in my opinion. Great, probably a little bit underrated app. I love it. DVD only now, moving forward here. Rolling Stones Air Studios, Steel Wheel Sessions, where they're writing and recording, Rock and a Hard Place and Mixed Emotions, Three Days in Montserrat, the uh, subtitle there. A couple more Stones titles. Have You Seen This Film Baby? Mayflower, Volume 1, 1959 to 64, various TV and live, and Volume 2 covers 1964 to 1968. Some more Stones, Voodoo Lounge in Japan. This is four DVDs from a gig in Tokyo, March 12th of 1995. First two DVDs are a broadcast version of the concert. The other two DVDs, the Laserdisc version. Now here's another pick of the month. Now this might be an older title, I'm not sure how old. I just never noticed it before. Cheap Trick Live in Budokan from April 28th of 1979. And bonus footage, Don Kirshner's Rock Concert, I believe the same year. Like I said, I'm not sure when this was released. Man, we all have that live album, you know? And I don't even know if I do anymore, but I feel like I do. You used to hear it so much. But this would be cool to actually see it instead of hearing it. That's where I'm going with that. So Cheap Trick will be a pick of the month, but I'm not sure when this actually came out. Eric Clapton to Save a Child concert benefit show from RO Studios London just this past December the 8th, 2023. 68 minutes on that one. KK's Priest. Watch this on YouTube, actually, leading up to the concert that I went to. And it's great. Bloodstock 2023, DVD-R from Shades, around 70 minutes. Another KK's Priest title. This just caught my eye because, man, the turnover on this is crazy. Monsters of Rock Cruise. It was audience shot. 
on March 3rd of this year, and it was available to be purchased online 10 days later on March 13th that I saw. Shades, 62 minutes on that one. You can watch a little of that on YouTube also. Cool title here from The Kinks, A Little Night Music, 1978. It's on Uxbridge. DVDR runs 51 minutes. We got footage from Granada TV in the UK and hotel room session in Vienna, but it's all pro shot stuff. Upgrade, it's considered. Rod Stewart, Budokan 1981, again on Uxbridge. It's a DVDR, 49 minutes on this one. Tokyo from May 12th of 1981. Here is a pick of the month, Black Sabbath Rockwave Festival 2005. Athens, Greece, 91 minutes. It's a DVDR, no labels, best I can tell. And it's a good sign it's a pick of the month when it's already ordered by yours truly. So we'll be talking about that when that comes in. Foreigner, live in Germany, 1981-1985. 2021 release that I missed, so I'm throwing it out there. We're in Dortmund, 1981, also known as the Pop Rock in Concert. Four bonus tracks from Newburgh, Germany, 1985. It's a DVD-R, 78 minutes on that one. Jeff Beck Tribute, 2023, Second Night, Beano label. Looks like an audience film on this one. Two Silver Press DVDs, multi-cam though, 176 minutes. Must have been a great show to be at either one of those shows. Badlands, Complete Toronto, 1989. We're at Rock and Roll Heaven, on July 28th of 1989 in Canada. Cool show for all you Badlands fans. Now, a slew of Aerosmith titles. Give and kiss a run for the money here. They're all DVD-Rs and no label, best I can tell. Let's hit it. Las Vegas 2012. This is December 1st, MGM Grand Garden Arena. Los Angeles 2012. This is from December 3rd at the Staples Center. New Orleans 2012. December 6th at the New Orleans Arena. Foxwoods, 2013 from July 10th in Connecticut. Osaka, 2013, first night from August 14th. And then wrapping it up with a killer title here, Aerosmith and Van Halen at the Stone Music Festival on Stadium, Sydney, Australia from April 20th, 2013. Again, if it's already ordered, pretty good sign it's a pick of the month, right? And I'm sure it is for a lot of us. Van Halen, Tokyo Dome 2013. Shades has a DVD-R and Zodiac has a silver press. Finally, a pro shot reunion show, which I've been waiting for forever. Sadly, I already ordered the Shades DVD-R before the Zodiac was announced. So I'll just have to live with that for the time being. Looks like complete shows and the same show on both labels, 125 minutes. The gig is from June 21st, 2013. So hopefully we'll get some 07 stuff at some point. I'll take this for now. Black Crows, here's a pretty cool title, Live Chronicle, 1990 to 2009. It's five DVD-Rs. It's mostly earlier stuff, actually. On Shades, one disc for each show. That's pretty cool, even though they're DVD-Rs. New Haven, Connecticut, 1990. Pink Pop Festival, 1990. Köln, Germany, 92. Essen, Germany, 96. And the Oz... Kina Rock Festival in Spain 2009. It's almost 400 minutes long and runs about 40 bucks. So pretty good uh, bargain here for Black Crows fan. I'm sure this is something you're pouncing right on. One more Black Crows title actually. KLOS Helpful Honda Rock Room from 2024. Shades again, 67 minutes. You have some pro shot footage from February 8th, 24. Audience filmed footage from iHeartRadio session. Uh, a couple days earlier from February 6th. White Snake Rock and Rio, 1985 Analog Master, 50 minute show here on DVD-R from January 19th of 85. This looks like a cool lineup for sure. David Bowie, By the Wall, DVD-R, Dead Flowers Records, Bremen, Germany from May 30th of 1978. And another Bowie title, The Midnight Special, 1980 Floor Show on Uxbridge. It's a DVD-R considered an upgrade. Three Led Zeppelin titles to tell you about, all on the Wendy label. Various footage, 8mm and TV, etc. Volume 1, 1957 to 71. Volume 2, 1971 to 1972. And Volume 3 just covers 1973. Like I said, uh, Wendy label for all three of those. The Jam, Newcastle, 1980, 65 minutes. 
Actually a misleading title, this footage is from the UK, Belgium, and Spain. And that'll do it for your 44 bootleg titles, new and recently released stuff. Now some stuff that I streamed on online, actually on YouTube, as far as I can tell. Floyd fans, check this one out. Out of nowhere came this Live at Pompeii era, previously unseen footage that popped up a few months ago. Now it looks like a few shorter segments have been out there since 2012. But this is 50 minutes now. The band, a month after filming the concert segments in Pompeii, they're in a Paris studio, basically remixing the soundtrack for the film. And man, I think Pompeii is the coolest concert video ever. And I don't think anything's ever going to change my mind. There's a lot of great concert videos out there. This one's just all of that. It's December of 71, redoing some vocals, redoing some guitar. Like I said, remixing the soundtrack for the film. But there's these new interview segments that you know had been in the film. And now we get longer versions of them. Individual guys, the whole band, and previously unseen and unused Pompeian scenes. You know that would have could have been in the movie. So basically, these are just ex excerpts. You know, overall, the band in this uncharacteristically jovial mood for once. You know, highlighted by this lunch break segment where one of the roadies, I think, ran out and got some beer, French bread, and oysters. And hence, when you search for this, the title, Chit Chat with Oysters. And it is just a really cool, basically treasure trove of Floyd Pompeii outtakes. As far as the footage from Pompeii, not a whole lot of concert footage, really. You get some clips of that. Some of this is what made the film. The majority of it's not, especially when it comes to the interviews and hanging out with the band. A lot of new stuff there to be seen and really cool. Now, you know, the original film was only about an hour. I think 64 minutes, it was just concert footage. Remixed for the US market to come out two years later in 74 with these bonus segments that were filmed at this Paris studio. And there you see them recording Dark Side of the Moon to go along with the interviews. We don't get any more dark side recording footage here. It just seems to be interviews, them touching up vocals, redoing vocals to echoes and such. But it's beautiful, perfect quality. It's in black and white and 50 minutes long. You know, will anyone dare to release that on bootleg? I don't know about that. Probably not, is what I'm gonna guess. And by the way, if you're looking for a cool version of Pompeii on bootleg, here's a nice double DVD. Disc one has the original mono mix original cut from 72. The official release might have that one. However, the remix that's on that official release edited in some new crazy poor computer animated, computer animated scenes that just ruin that film. So best thing we can get on DVD I think is disc two on this one. It's dual layer disc, looks and sounds great and it's taken from the Japanese laser disc. So it's the American version which I think runs 85 minutes. Okay, it says right here. So the restored 1974 theatrical cut, and really all they mean by restored is the fact that the official DVD we got of this put in some real bullshit computer animation. So there you go, there's a cool title. It's still out there to be had as far as I can tell. All right, I usually show you my latest two new pickups. All right, but I'm gonna start with some titles that I actually watched first because watching these is what led me to, to buy the ones I'll show you after that. So, first of all, Kiss Alive Largo 75. I'm gonna do a full review on this. I know I keep saying that, but eventually I will get to it. There's a few unique things about this performance. In particular, one of the guys' performance kind of blew me away unexpectedly. And production-wise, this video is kind of different than what you usually see. And uh, it's interesting. At first it kind of gets on your nerves and then it becomes pretty damn cool as you watch. So this is Kiss Alive Largo 75. Now also some other viewing. Van Halen at the US Festival 1983. I picked this up a few months ago and finally got around to watching this one. And I've had this forever. You know, it's one of the first kinds of videos I think I ever got. Early 90s, or maybe even late 80s at a trade show. Uh, overall the show's really good, complete show. Pro shot and all that stuff. Sounds really good. There's definitely though, some, there's some lulls in the action. I think they had some sound issues, some equipment issues. Dave Shtick, you know, 
really at its peak. While he's stalling for time up on the stage, his, his stage banner can get a little ridiculous. It's kind of classic and annoyingly stupid all at the same time. And, you know, while I'm watching this, Dave makes a comment. I think he drinking da Jack Daniels on stage, makes this comment about The Clash. Only The Clash put iced tea in their Jack Daniels bottles or something like that. It's pretty funny. To, to, they got me looking online to see what the hell is this Clash Van Halen thing going on. Supposedly had a war of words in the press and what have you about being paid and what they weren't being paid and were being paid and stuff like that. Clash headlined the New Wave Day. Van Halen, the Metal Day. Now, the Clash, of course, famously held the festival hostage, refused to go on, till the festival uh, managers, I guess, made some large donation to a charity. So that's all true, you know. And got me looking online about the Clash's, you know, just basically, you know how it is, a rabbit hole. All these articles about the sad last gig of the Clash at the US Festival really went out with a whimper, you know, things like that. And it's almost like all these different online magazines or whatever they are. It's like they're all reading each other's articles and just reprinting them. Because does anyone watch the damn video? <laughs> you're, you're gonna comment on it, watch it. This video is great. I just loved, loved watched the Clash video. Matter of fact, man, you know, this was like an automatic, oh, I gotta get an upgrade of this, even though it's just a DVD-R and all that stuff. I couldn't find a silver press version of it out there. I just gotta have it. I've had this thing forever, love VH. I remember it being a great show. It's a really, really good show. The sound problems kind of break the flow of the show. All right, and quickly, Let's Play isn't an upgrade. Here's, well, it used to be a videotape, and then here's the transfer, DVD-R. All right, yeah, it's an upgrade. So that can go away. As far as the Clash, man, I don't know what people are watching or not watching is probably more the thing because the Clash Us Festival, I threw that on next. Let me see this sad last concert that I remember being great. It's awesome. As a matter of fact, I liked it better than the Van Halen show. I really did. I'm like, I want to watch this thing again. I guess I'm just a Clash fan. I don't even really realize how much of it. I don't know. This show is awesome. If this is their, their you know, going out with a whimper, then damn, I need some more Clash on video because these guys were great. Some more recent viewing, Journey, Soundstage 1978. I have this here coupled with a 83 video, but just watch the 78 version. Aired in July of 78. And unlike the usual Soundstage concerts where it's just a concert in that small venue of theirs, you do get that here, but they also have some footage from Soldier Field. So setting up on stage in Soldier Field, rehearsing a little bit, and some interviews taken from that portion. So the excellent 78 album, Infinity, came out, I think, January 78. Ainsley Dunbar on drums for that. The soundstage show is at WTTW Studios. That is with Ainsley Dunbar. The crowd here is completely unfamiliar with this new material, even though it's recorded, I think, a few months later. It's so new, but man, the band is ridiculously tight here. I mean, it's amazing. I don't think I've ever heard a band sound so good live as Journey sounds doing these Infinity songs live on soundstage. They almost sound like records. It's really, you, you can, almost can't believe what you're watching. The Soldier Field footage, though, has Steve Smith on drums. So I guess, you know, the recording was kind of split between the end of Ainsley's era and then Steve coming in. But most of the live footage is from the studio with Ainsley Dunbar. Hands down the best Journey video I've ever seen. And I've got like two or three others. This one is just great. Check this out. I think it's online to watch on YouTube. Soundstage 78 by Journey is incredible. Uh, also watched Heart from 78. I think I got this one. I got the Van Halen Us Festival. Largo 1978 Heart. Another one, just the DVD-R version. Kind of bought this site unseen. I don't think I even sampled anything online. I just went for it. You know, one of these five or ten dollar DVD-Rs. Pro Shot, 86 minutes. So let's check it out. Uh, fair quality at best on this one. It's just general lack of clarity. There's not a whole lot of flubbing around with the picture, but it is a really good show. Handful of awesome performances here. 
and I could see watching this occasionally. You know, I'm not going to be throwing this on constantly just because it's uh, just so sort of rough. The sound is decent and the picture is decent, but not great. So glad I only spent five or ten bucks on this. You know, not sure if they're going to be able to upgrade that a whole lot more. It's actually somewhat clear, but in this sort of blurry way. Best way to describe it. Like it's already been cleaned up and probably the best they can get it. So I did stream a couple of things online. Eric Clapton, Life in 12 Bars, biopic. Kind of along the lines of Thin Lizzy's A Song for While You're Away. The new disc on that multi-disc set. Biofilm, basically, because it just gives you an overview of what's going on in Eric's musical life. It's more about his personal life. And it's really kind of cool that way. And I have to plead ignorance with this guy. I never watched a bio of him, I guess, or anything, or read anything. No idea how long and deep his substance abuse and drinking issues went. Really back to the late 60s, and really not resolved until the 90s. Some serious personal, personal issues from his youth. Nothing really his fault, just things that happened around him. Kind of help you understand how he got drawn to the blues basically submerged himself into his guitar. Also kind of suggests that his upbringing was what led him to that point where he couldn't stick with any one band longer than six months. Cream, Blind Faith, Derek and the Dominoes. These were all just within three or four years. Delaney and Bonnie, solo career, basically saying that uh, at that point, things were just so bad, he just didn't know whether he was coming or going and so forth. So. Really good one. I really enjoyed that one. It might have been on HBO. I don't remember. Eric Clapton, Life in 12 Bars. Check it out. Also streamed The Greatest Night in Pop. Now, no, not an amazing watch. It's the story of We Are the World, that song. You know, cheesy, schmaltzy ballad, but actually a pretty fairly interesting story, I thought. So just kind of background, occasionally glance up kind of watch. Uh, song was written and recorded within a few weeks. They had all the singers in town for the American Music Awards. That's the only way they were going to get everyone to studio at the same time like that. So that just kind of worked, worked out that way. They worked from basically midnight till 10 a.m. the next day. And Quincy Jones was the producer. You get some comic relief in the fact that Bob Dylan's there. And they show him, you know, every so often. He just looks like he can't wait to get the hell out of there. It really is kind of funny. He just looks so out of place. And he's literally the last one there. They, they didn't know what to do with him. And finally, at the very end, Quincy Jones squeezes those couple of lines out of Bob. Because uh, he, he had no idea what to do, how to do it. It's really just kind of wild seeing these 30-odd rock and pop stars all together in the same room. And Bruce Springsteen standing next to you know Cindy Lauper and Michael Jackson and all. It was just kind of a wild scene. And you know some of these people are gone now. So not a headliner. But a decent little, like I said, watch while you're doing something else. So, All right, let's get on to the new pickups of the month, guys. I think I got five of them to show you. Thin Lizzy, Irish Tour 83, another one I recently got into watching and started listening. It's a CD-DVD combo, but man, the DVD is where it's at for me with this one. All right, another no-label job. A lot of no-label stuff anymore. And let me just give you a quick peek at this one. Decent little uh, insert there, and disc one, and then the DVD, DVD-R, I guess. Final tour, I think this gig is from April 9th. So the CD is the same material as the, the uh, main show of the DVD. But let's talk this DVD real quick. First of all, if you got this years ago, and I found this in like an FYE, you know, this isn't a bootleg or anything. Pro Shot Show, these 11 songs, although some of them are just real short versions. Anyway, that's the same concert on this DVD. Let's talk this this concert video that's on here. It's got some great bonus stuff. Uh, so like I said, Dublin, we're at the RDS Arena, April 9th of 83. Same set, same exact stuff. But you know what, this quality on here, I always thought it was a little rough as far as uh, just not clear, you know? Get an upgrade in clarity with the video on here. However, it is noticeably darker, but it's just a shame. I don't know if they had to darken it up to clear it up or what, but it's clear as can be, you know? Just is darker, you know? And I don't really have a way of messing with my TV sort of, you know, coloring without doing it on a 
permanent sort of basis where it's going to be a hassle to get it back. So I don't even bother getting into that. Maybe you can try tweaking that. But I'll tell you, it, it's if I had to pick one or the other, I'd take this version. So a little darker for sure on most songs, but way clearer. You know, I don't love this show overall. It's not great compared to the old classic Lizzie, but Angel of Death's really strong on here. Uh, the Sun Goes Down is awesome and uh, Still in Love With You. John Sykes does a great job on those songs. So that's the main video. But what's of interest here, you get this Farewell Irish Tour documentary. I don't have the time written down. If I had to guess, it's like 15 minutes or something. A lot of backstage, you see the band crew setting up, hauling out, hauling out the gear, hauling it in, that kind of thing. Backstage interviews with uh, the guys in the band. Get Cold Sweat and the sun goes down. Cold Sweat is actually like a promo video version shot in Belfast. There's a lot of edits and stuff, but that's really cool because that's different. And then I think the sun goes down is actually from the same main show in Dublin. So a little bit of an extra on that. Besides the documentary footage, an extra song, so that's kind of cool. But where it's really at, man, is this last section here. Gas Tank Live. It's February 12th, 1983. It's hosted by Rick Wakeman, this TV show where he's like the uh, MC and also playing keyboards and stuff while he's uh, you know, doing his job. It's really cool. And then Lizzie comes on, and it's actually Phil, Phil Solo, but he's got John Sykes with him. And the first song they do, uh, Growing Up, that's okay. Nothing special there. The second song, though, The Man's a Fool, you know, I've heard a decent amount of Phil Solo. Not a ton, but a, enough to have an opinion. I don't think it's awesome, you know. It's really just not that great. I'm fine with the softer sound he had at that point, more commercial. But uh, the songs just aren't as good, you know. I have no problem with pop music and stuff. You guys probably know. It's just, the songwriting's just not there anymore. Except, I'll tell you, this is like the best song I've ever heard Phil do solo. The Man's a Fool. And Rick Wakeman's playing on it. Him and Sykes are going back and forth riffing with each other. It is so worth the price of this. This whole CD package is is really pretty solid. But man, that was just the icing on the cake seeing that. Because Rick Wakeman is your host. Then he jams with the band, you know, and it's a great song and it's a great performance of a great song. So this one is really worth seeking out, man. You get the 11 songs on CD. You get the DVD-R of the concert, especially if you don't already own it in any form. You know, a little bit different of quality. It's clearer, but it's darker on this one. But I would say it's still an upgrade. If I had to pick one or the other, I'd pick this one. And the bonus footage just just kills. So there's... That'll be the end of the viewing. And I have some other Lizzie CD, DVD combos I still have to get into. I listened to this Dominion 82, but it has a bonus DVD or it's a CD, DVD package. I still need to get into this guy. It's from London, April of 82. I love Snowy White Lizzie. And then I also have Regal Theater 83 to get into too. Regal Theater, the uh, video came as bonus on the Live and Dangerous. So we already have that. So we'll get to compare it again. We'll see what the footage is like, the quality is like on that guy. Moving on to some new pickups. Let's start right off the bat with The Clash, 1983, The Us Festival. Yeah, it's just a slimline DVD-R, but you know what? That's all they had. I just think the show is great, man. I think it's better than the Van Allen show, honestly. Now, it's, you know, I don't mean to compare apples and oranges here, but this show's awesome. You know, for a sad farewell gig, it's great. Loved it. Now, again, we get the play. Isn't an upgrade. You know what? Not really. I'm going to hold on to this one. It's They're virtually identical in quality. There's just a slight slight loss of clarity compared to this. I'm going to hold on to this one, actually. Great show by The Clash. I don't know if they ever did a bad one. If this is your last gig, they get slammed by a lot of people, and it's awesome. You know, Mick Jones would soon leave the band. They would carry on with the name Clash, Joe Strummer leading. I think Paul Simonon was originally there, and then he left and so forth. But, man, I don't know. Just, there's still The Clash here to me. Love that show. Next up, some Sabbath Headless in Russia, I've shown you this one before. Two DVDs, Silvers, not, no label with this one. This has been out with a different cover in the past, so this is sort of a new version. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume, it's an, assume it's an upgrade, but I haven't really necessarily read that. Another one that I already own some trade copies of. 
We'll get to that in a second. Haven't watched it in years, probably since I bought, since I traded for those copies 10 or 12 years ago. And you know what? It's better than I recalled. Or maybe I'm just more into the Tony Martin era now than I was back then. It's probably, probably some of the case. And of course we got that great 89 and 95 box set coming out. That should be cool. But what we get on here is two shows from the same day, an afternoon show and an evening show. Same set list with the exception of the uh, early show, you get them doing that old instrumental Apache. Band's having a great time on stage playing that song. They're almost like kind of laughing at each other while they play it. Second show, the evening show, has the same set list, but they do shuffle the songs around. So a little bit of a different experience, but you know, you kind of get the gist here. And uh, we can maybe talk about this later on a Sabbath episode. Let's just show you the discs real quick. They're pretty cool. We got some Headless Cross Tour, so we got Headless Cross DVDs on there. Let's see what's back back yonder. Uh, just another, uh, but pretty cool stuff, man. Definitely worth upgrading. Hopefully upgrade. Let's find out right now. Because these look great, man. I was really, really happy with these, but not anymore. There's noticeable upgrade with, with both of these, okay, as far as the clarity. So th those other videos were good. They had a lot of like sort of flicker and static happening every now and then. Nothing really too ho horrendous, but that's all cleaned up. I don't know how you clean up static across a picture, but it's been done. This looks really, really good. So we'll talk about it more in the Sabbath episode. That was, uh, I think, 30 bucks for those two DVDs. And happy with that. On to some Maiden. I showed you I picked up that Beast Over England. Two CDs came with the bonus DVD-R. Beast Over Hammersmith, the video. It's all from the same show. We're talking March 20th of 82. And the band, I'll show you the other side of that. Okay, band gave us 45 minutes of this. On the uh, history of Iron Maiden, the early days. 45 minute segment in there. And there it is, if you can see it. You know what I'm talking about. So this one, I was hoping, was the whole show. And it is on audio. But what we only get is 45 minutes from the early days video. You do get four more songs with video, though. One song is of the same quality as the early days video. So, And then you get three more that are sort of unedited, rough, rough material. So you get four extra songs on video. But the whole song, the whole concert will play on your screen with a still shot over the audio only segment. So that was pretty cool to watch. The, didn't know that was coming though, that it wasn't going to all be video. So a little disappointing and yet at the same time it's four extra songs. So that's what you get with some of these bonus things, right? So that's that. On to last new pickup. Guys, finally. Picking up, you know, I did that review of Monsters of Rock Van Halen DVD that came out about six months ago. And this one, so it's a, somebody commented at the time, hey, you haven't seen that Montreal video yet? No, I haven't actually. I, I'm a little bit of stubborn, you know. I, I want to buy it and have it in my hands before I watch it. I do watch stuff on YouTube here and there, but not that often. So here it is finally. Now DVD ours only, but it's Montreal 84 audience shot show. Somebody up in Canada knew what they were doing. Filmed a lot of great concerts this era, you know, Sabbath, etc. So two DVDs on this, DVD-Rs, with some cool audio bonuses on them. So on DVD one, you get like the first half of the show, and then you get the in the studio for the album 1984 15th anniversary special. So broadcast in 99. Being DVDs, you gotta listen to it in your DVD player, Blu-ray player. So, the second disc is the second half of the show, Rockline interview from February of 84, and BBC interview, also from February on disc two. So, I only watched one song just to get a feel for the quality. It's pretty damn good for audience shot. Looks like it's been upgraded over what you'll find on YouTube, so it's pretty cool. That way, totally watchable, sounds good, and all that stuff. Guys, some movies. Went on a good movie run and actually got about 10 things to just talk about really quick. Aniara, it's a 2018 sci-fi psych thriller sort of survivalist 
thing. It's on HBO and Hulu. That was really good. I never heard of it before. Aniara, 2018. Netflix had three 2023 movies that I watched all within a week. Something called Nowhere. This lady is adrift on a shipping container in the ocean, and it's pretty pretty cool. You can't just stop, you can't stop watching this movie. Really good one. Society of the Snow, also from 2023 on Netflix. The story of that 1972 airplane crash that held that Uruguayan soccer team. Of course, we had the movie Alive. I think it was 93. So an updated version of this. And that movie was great. Both of those movies are great. Check this one out. One called Nyad on Netflix about Diane Nyad, 64-year-old swimmer who made it from Cuba to Florida. That was actually pretty interesting. Now, some classics I watched in chronological order from 68, 2001, A Space Odyssey, Stanley Kubrick classic. Still holds up, you know, pretty good movie. Motel Hell from 1980, some cult horror classic there. And I hadn't seen that in forever. The dude I went to the Ozzy concert with, my first show ever, he brought this over and showed me this. And it's been that long. I don't know if I've ever watched it since then, so it's been like 40 years. Pretty good. That holds up pretty pretty well. Here's something that I didn't really like that I never saw and I always wanted to see it. The Keep from 1984. What a cool poster. You know, it's sci-fi, horror of sorts. You know, Nazis, time travel, eternal evil all mixed together in this, you know, I don't know, stone pyramid kind of thing. Have, has the makings to be great. It just doesn't really do it, you know. I don't even know how to describe it. It's just too slow and not enough violence and seems like it's going to be all that first 15 minutes. It just never goes anywhere, for me anyway. Now here's one that really held up well. The Hitcher from 1986. Action thriller, lots of violence in this one. Rucker Hauer stars in this. Uh, gory action thriller is how I describe it. I haven't seen this one since, since the mid-80s, man. Really good one there. And finally, 30 Days of Night, 2007, vampire horror movie up in Alaska, supposedly. And man, it was a really good one. Watched this when it came out, still holds up really well. And also did happen to throw on, this is, believe it or not, the remake of Dawn of the Dead is 20 years old. So I gave that a re-watching. Re still pretty good movie. Not close to the original, but is a pretty good remake because remakes go and what the hell throw in some day of the dead too and that capped off my movie viewing for the last month or so guys that's going to do it i got a lot of stuff on order as far as concert video i mean tons of stuff more van halen sabbath a couple sabbath titles scorpions fog hat i'm out of control what can i say the usual all right guys that's going to do it for now catch you all next time everyone have a great day See you around.